Remember how Han Solo got encased in carbonite and taken by Boba Fett in The Empire Strikes Back? What happened after this? Did Boba Fett take him straight to Jabba? Or did other things happen to Han and Boba? In today's video, I will go over this and more. So after Boba Fett got Han Solo to his ship and left Bespin, Han Solo's carbonite chamber sensor started to sound an alarm. To Fett's dismay, the carbonite slab was beginning to melt, potentially ruining Solo and his prize. Fett then had to make a pit stop to an old ally named Doc Ragan on the crime world of Nar Shadda. Here, Ragan was successfully able to stabilize Solo in exchange for a future favor. However, while this was happening, Jabba the Hutt grew extremely impatient and wondered what had happened to Fett and Solo. He then proceeded to hire another bounty hunter, Devil Lumpop, to track down Fett and see what was happening. He then tracks down Solo and sees Rhaegon stabilizing Solo. He then proceeds to sell the location of Solo to Crimson Dawn instead of Jabba. It is here where Crimson Dawn locates Solo, kill Rhaegon, and steal Solo for themselves. Then, Crimson Dawn decide to hold an event where they are going to auction off Solo and ironically invite Jabba to the event. These circumstances infuriate Jabba to such a degree that he puts a massive bounty on Boba Fett, who is unknown to this. The bounty is so large that it gains the attention of many notable bounty hunters, including Dengar, Forlom, Valance, Zuckus, and more. During his confrontation with Zuckus and Forlom, he's able to defeat Forlom and take a cybernetic head with him. Putting a restraining bolt on the head, he is then able to pry the information of his bounty on him from Forlom. Forlom then explains that Java put the bounty on Boba Fett because he was taking too long to deliver Solo. Infuriated, Fett goes immediately to Tatooine to confront Java and explain the situation. While here, he is confronted by Biv Fortuna tells Fett that Jabba is not here. Biff Fortuna tries to play the nice card, but Boba sees him out, murdering the two Gamorrean guards that were next to Bib. Boba then implores Bib to reveal why Jabba put a bounty on him. Bib tells Boba that he was taking too long and that they heard that someone else took Captain Solo, making Jabba think that Boba sold Solo to them. Bib proceeded to inform Boba that Jabba had first claim, which is meant to be respected and that because of his treachery, a price must be paid. Boba then has to explain that he didn't sell Han Solo, but instead somebody stole Solo from him. He then tells Bib he can get Solo back, but he needs to take him to Jabba so he can clear up the situation, to which Bib again informs him that Jabba isn't at the palace currently. This is where Bib informs Boba of the event Crimson Dawn is holding. He finds out who stole Solo from underneath him and vows revenge. At Crimson Dawn, it is revealed that Kira stole Solo in a bid to make Crimson Dawn a notable faction again. With so many factions, people, governments, etc. wanting Solo, she thought this could potentially save Crimson Dawn. From the Hutt Cartel to the Empire, many powerful organizations came to claim Solo. Outside the event, Boba Fett took stock of the situation, noting it was heavily guarded. Boba then is attacked by Bosk, looking to take the bounty held on him. Boba then proceeds to fire his rocket at Bosk, which knocks him far from where he was standing and blows off his legs. Bosk is left in pain, crawling on the ground. Bosk inquires if Boba is going to kill him, to where Boba informs him that he's going to be a message to anyone who dares to try to go after him by tying him up to a rock. At the party, Kira finally introduces herself. She talked about Crimson Dawn in its earlier days, stating they were finally making the comeback. It is here where she wheels out Han Solo to put him up for auction. The bidding starts to take off. After a long time of bidding, Jabba bids an astounding 1 million credits and wins the auction. Then, Darth Vader comes to the auction to win back Solo due to the Empire's representative, Sly Moore, failing to acquire Han Solo. Jabba doesn't dare go against the Empire due to fear of losing his life and concedes the bid. Kira, however, requires that Vader and the Empire pay her for Han Solo. This causes an argument that results in Vader attacking Kira. Boba Fett then infiltrates the party. To his surprise, he bumps into Chewbacca, who, with Leia, Luke, and Lando, are also infiltrating the party to steal Han Solo back. This results in Fett and Chewbacca fighting. Luke arrives in orbit of the planet. 
Vader immediately senses this and stops his duel with Kira. He proceeds to threaten Han Solo's life in order to force Luke into another duel of him. Luke gets Vader to come from Han and chase him in a starship instead. While this happens, the Imperials are ordered to take Solo to Darth Vader's flagship, the Executor. Enraged by their loss, Buku the Hutt argues with Jabba asking if he is fit to lead the Huts. Jabba ignores him and returns to Tatooine. Boba attempts to stop the Imperials before they leave with Solo, but is stopped by fellow bounty hunters Dengar and Valance before he can do this. During their fight, Fett convinced Valance to join forces with him and they ditch Dengar on the planet. This leads to Fett, Valance, Chewie, Lando, and Leia all giving chase to the Imperials in their ships. Things get even more crazy when Boku decides to call an entire fleet of part cartel ships to stop the Imperials from taking Solo. The Falcon is allowed to land in the Executor due to a Crimson Dawn spy that is in Imperial ranks. Fett and Valance also land on the Super Star Destroyer as well. Fett finally makes his way to Solo with Valance, but surprisingly betrays him and leaves him for dead. He stops Leia and the group before they can unfreeze Han. Then abruptly, a hot missile strikes the outside of the Executor where they are standing, blowing a hole in the hull and shooting Han out into space. Not daring to lose Han again, Fett shoots himself out into space with his jetpack and uses his wrist cables to grab Han, finally recapturing his prize. Leia, heartbroken over this, escapes with Chewie and Lando back to the Falcon where they make their escape from the Empire. Due to the chaos outside and the fact that the Huts attacked the Empire, the Emperor formally ordered Vader off the pursuit of Skywalker and instead to deal with the Hut Cartel. This results in Vader killing all the remaining Hut Cartel members on the planet and fleet. The only one to survive is Jabba, who was on his way back to Tatooine. After one final attempt from IG-88 to take Solo from Fett, IG-88 fails and Fett successfully gives Solo to Jabba the Hutt on Tatooine. And the rest is history. Han Solo is put up on Jabba's wall until the events of Return of the Jedi. So that's the story of what happened to Solo after the events of Empire Strikes Back. What do you think? Is this crazy? Does this make sense? Let me know in the comment section below. Regardless, thank you for watching and may the force be with you always.